Hey everyone, it's Carry Spikes here, welcoming you to another episode of Friday Night Magic. In this week's episode, we'll be playing a red white Boros Bros aggro deck. And this looks a little bit slow. So I think I'm going to take a gamble. And yeah, sure, I'll take that. At least we can play our Rabble Master, so we'll play our Mountain. So this is a red white uh, aggro deck. It's got a little bit of removal, it's got a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of protection with the God's Willing here. And then we've got guys like uh, Hero of Eroas and uh, a couple of other uh, Banisher Priest, Goblin Rabble Master. Of course, we've got the Anger of the Gods just in case we are playing against some token decks. Although other weenie decks are also pretty susceptible to this because it does 3 damage across the board. Uh, not too worried about it though, considering that you know it, if we get this guy pumped up to let's say a 4 or a 5, uh, it's going to wipe the entire board and it's really not going to do anything to our guy. So, we've got a few other small pump-ups here, like, uh, oh, what are they called now? Those wings that give you flying, and I think plus one, plus two, or something like that. So we've got uh, a little bit of pump-up, and uh, we're just going to play this, and we're just going to start attacking. Because why not? We're aggro, that's what we do. Uh, so uh, let's just attack. The goblin has to attack, and then we'll also attack with the hero. He's got a 1-1, one -one, so I don't mind if he blocks the goblin. At least this way we're putting ourselves out of crater hoof uh, uh, range. <laughs> so if you guys watched last week's video, in the second game I got absolutely destroyed. Uh, I think that's an understatement saying destroyed because I just got annihilated by crater hoof behemoth, and it was stuff like this. You know, it was a bunch of little, it was a bunch of little elvish visionaries and satyr wayfinders or not satyr wayfinders. What am I trying to say? Oh, was it a satyr wayfinder? Whoa! What happened there? The game just kind of got choppy. But anyway, it was an elf ball deck, so it was very, very, very small, and Crater Hoof came down and just pumped everything up, and there was just no hope. There was absolutely no hope, so I got crushed, and uh, hopefully, with the anger of the gods, this week, make it a little bit less susceptible to getting crushed by Crater Hoof by getting rid of his smaller guys. <coughs> Excuse me. But getting rid of the smaller guys when playing... Uh, Let's pass the turn when playing against green. Because green has a lot of small utility creatures. Uh, in paper magic, actually, it's uh, it's, qu it's quite a lot more than it is, obviously, in here. But you've got stuff like Elvish Mystic. Uh, you've got uh, Avacyn's Pilgrim. You've got uh, a bunch of different elves and stuff that tap for mana. A bunch of mana dorks and stuff. Uh, so, flesh to dust. What is he going to... Oh, hold on. So, I'm going to respond by giving him protection from black. Uh, I think we want that on the bottom. Wow, so he just spent his entire turn trying to kill our Goblin Rabble Master, because he is annoying Nimbus Wings, that's what I was talking about, and he's been replaced by AI. He knows it's over. Let's play uh, Nimbus Wings on this. So we give it plus three, plus three. Sorry, plus one, plus one for the trigger. Uh, and another plus one, plus two, I believe and flying with the Nimbus Wings. And we'll go to combat. It's difficult to stick around and play against a deck like this. Uh, once it gets rolling, it's really very difficult to stop, especially if you've got a bunch of little tiny 1-1s one or 2-1s two or 2-2s, two and then, you know, they just get wrathed away. So... That's unfortunate, but that's the nature of the deck. Okay, that's cool. I can, I can live with that. I think we just swing in with our flyer and we'll be fine. So, let's just swing in with the flyer. I don't think it's really pertinent to play anything else at this point. We just win the game. So that's going to do it for game number one. Well, these guys have to attack. I guess it doesn't really matter. He's at two. He's going to have to block one. But let's swing with the flyer anyway. Just for good measure. And, yeah, he's just going to block the one. And that's fatal. Alright, guys, moving on to the next game. Okay, here we are for game two. Uh, we've got a pretty decent hand. We've got the hero with Hero Ass, uh, so he's got Heroic, uh, which is, uh, he gets plus one, plus one whenever he gets targeted by a spell, and then all of our auras are one colorless less to cast, which is always nice. And we've, of course, we've got our Nimbus Wings, and uh, let's keep this hand before we're forced to take a new one. We've got our Nimbus Wings, uh, which is uh, an enchant creature, plus one, plus two, and flying for the creature that's enchanted, which is really nice. And then our uh, Sigiled Paladin, First Strike, Exalted 2-2. Two, two. The Exalted means that if you attack with the only one creature, uh, it gets plus one, plus one for each creature with Exalted that you control. 
And I'll go over the rest of these two cards in just a second. Let's just take our turn here. So let's play Hero of Eros. All right, and then uh, obviously the follow-up play, there's going to be Nimbus Wings. So we'll just pass the turn. He plays a 1-1 unblockable, that's okay. So we've got a True Fire Paladin, he's a 2-2. Vigilance, so that means that when he attacks, he does not tap, which is always nice. And uh, we can pump him with uh, a red and a white, either to give him plus 2 plus 0 oh until end of turn, or uh, to give him first strike, uh, which can be very good. And in some cases, if you have 4 mana available, you can do both. The nice thing about this is, as long as it doesn't have this little tap symbol, See if I can find it here. Not really. As long as uh, as long as long there's no little tap symbol, that's pretty much like a little arrow going to the right beside this. It means that you can pay this as much as you can afford to. So you can do it as much as you like. Whereas abilities with tap symbols on them means that you pay that much and then you have to tap that creature in order for that ability to, to trigger. So he's got a flyer, but that's okay. We've got a 4-5. So we'll just swing in. Next turn, we're going to play our Sigiled Paladin. Ooh, or maybe we'll play our Brimaz. This is a very aggressive hand. So we can just do that. I mean, I think I think it's safe to say we're, we might win the game here. Just because of the amount of damage that we'll be doing. So we're going to have two Exalted Triggers. So when these both are out on the field, and we attack with just this guy... It's going to become a 6-7. Sorry. Yeah. 5-6. Six. Six, yeah, it's going to be a 6-7. Now the question is, do we play our Brimas? Or do we play this? I think we play this because it's first strike. I don't know. We can always play our Brimas, though. Brimas is really good. But I think I'm going to play this, just because it's going to allow us to do more damage with this guy. Plus we have a blocker left behind, so if he decides to attack, we might be able to block something. So this is now a 5-6 flyer. Uh, I think a few more hits with this and it might be the game. So we'll finish combat here. He's down to 11. And then we'll be... Uh, We'll be passing the turn over to him. So he's got four mana open. He's got a Chasm, uh, Chasm Stalker. Skulker. Sorry. Chasm Skulker. He's going to hit us for two. Not a big deal. Uh, so the uh, the Cloudfin Raptor is a flying evolve. It, it comes in as a zero one, one But the evolve means that if you bring a creature in that's uh, either one power or one toughness higher than it has, uh, it, it gets plus one, plus one, which is really nice. So it's a good evasive creature. Interesting. Very interesting. I'm really... I feel compelled to just play this again. But it's double white. Hmm. You know what? Let's do it. I mean, it's... We're not going to be able to play anything else, but let's do it. Because now... Oh, what's he... Is he, uh, does he have a counter spell? He does so... Wow, he has to dissolve it, eh? Yeah. It's probably a good idea. But he's only got three cards in hand, so it's a good thing we played that. I mean, I'd rather have this get dissolved than, let's say, uh, my Brimaz, which I only have one of in the deck, or my uh, my Goblin uh, Rabble Master, which I think I may have two. One or two, I'm not quite sure. So again, we're going to attack with just this. And because of the Exalted Trigger here, we're only attacking with one creature, so we're going to get a 5-6 instead of a 4-5. And that's going to bring him down to 6. I feel like we just win next turn because we can do six damage and we can just um, we can just God's willing this prior to combat, and uh, he won't be able to block it. So, in this case, I think he should save some blockers. I think it'd be very silly if he attacked with his Cloudfin Raptor. So that seems like a good idea. Yeah, just un attack with the unblockable. What? Why would you do that? Alright, um, well, I'm not going to bother blocking because it's a 3-3. What is he going to do? Oh, he's going to pump it with Think Twice. <laughs> uh, so the Chasm Skulker gets bigger every time he draws a card, and Think Twice allows him to draw a card at instant speed, so he's going to hit us for 5. Really not a big deal. What 
to do what to do. Oh wow guys, we win the game right here. So we're gonna go God's willing. Just gonna dissolve it, okay, that's fine. So that's still gonna get pumped up. And then we're gonna God's willing again. <laughs> and I think that's the game. And we're gonna give her protection from blue. Leave that on the top, not that it matters. And then we're going to attack. Good game. Seven damage goes through, he can't block because it has protection from blue. And that is the game. Alright guys, on to the final game. Alright guys, we're back for game number three. And this looks like a pretty good hand, so we're gonna keep this. Okay, and he just got replaced by the AI. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. Okay, so we're back for game 3.5. <laughs> uh, this, uh, this hand looks terrible. Let's draw a new one. That's better. That's much better. Let's keep that. Hero of your ass. Ordeal of Heliod. Really good. I don't know if I've mentioned Ordeal of Heliod before. But it's an enchantment. And it goes on a creature. Whenever that creature attacks, it gets plus one, plus one. And when it has three or more counters on it... It falls off and we gain 10 life. So with Hero of Eroas, it's interesting the way that works because whenever he gets en enchanted or just targeted by really any spell that I control... Ooh, Brain Maggot, that's nasty. What is he going to take? He's probably going to take the Hero of Eroas. Wouldn't be surprised. Because that's pretty much our next play. Oh, that's dirty. Brain Maggot, oh god. That's terrible. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of good cards in his hand, so he might not take the hero. He might have a different way of dealing with the hero. He might take the banisher priest. What did he take? He took the hero, of course. Well, oh, that kind of uh, messes up our plans, but that's okay because we're gonna play our banisher priest, and we're gonna get that thing back. So that's pretty sweet. It's good that we drew into our second planes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Banisher Priest, 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, they get to exile one of his creatures, and it stays exiled until Banisher Priest leaves the battlefield. So actually, a very similar way to Brain Maggot, except I don't get to look at his hand. It's just interacting with what's on the battlefield. So he's going to hit us for one. It's fine. I just hope he doesn't have another Brain Maggot. That would scare me. Stormbreath Dragon, that's pretty sweet. Pro White. I don't know if it's going to help us here. I think he's playing black. What is going on? The game just froze. Alright, let's do that. <coughs> Jeez, excuse me, guys. I got something in my throat. I've been coughing a little bit lately. So we'll play the Banisher Priest. Target the Brain Maggot. And we'll get our Hero of Eroas back. Hopefully, we'll get to play him. Now, if he's got some kind of counter spell, or not counter spell, but some kind of kill. Like a tribute to hunger or something. Uh, he'll be able to kill that. And then he gets his brain mega back. And then he takes our hero of hero ass away again. So that would really suck. But if I can play the hero. I'm not too worried. So he's got four cards in hand. I can't be 100% confident that he's got some kind of kill spell there. He might. But it looks like he's thinking. Oh, what is he doing here? Oh, he's just going to play a vampire. Okay. Well that's a relief. Oh no! Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> he gets his. Well, I guess. Oh, he gets it back into the battlefield. Oh, that's so bad. Oh man, guys, I gotta say, I'm not impressed with this brain maggot action here. I am not impressed at all. Hmm. Well, I guess what we can do is we can play. Let's play in the train caracal. And I'm going to avoid playing that right now. Because if he sees that, he might just kill it. But this way, at least if we can pump it up a little bit, we'll be giving it some flying. Not flying. 
What is this? Chooses a card in his. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Well, I guess I'm gonna keep this. Because, well, he's tapped out, so he can't do anything else. Yeah, we're just gonna keep that. That really sucks. Wow. Just complete hand disruption. At least we'll be getting some life with this, though, so that'll be something. And we can stay alive long enough. That dead weight, though, eh? Jeez. Getting rid of our Banisher Priest is somewhat annoying. I don't know if he's going to attack with his Brain Maggot. I mean, I think he should, just because... Oh, he's not going to attack at all. Wow. Alright, well. Let's do this. I think I am going to attack. Because if he wants to double block, I just get my hero Vero ass back. So that's fine. If he wants to double block, yeah, he's not going to double block. And we're going to pass the turn. Jesus Christ. I don't think we're going to win this game, guys. We've just, we've got nothing. We gained a little bit of life there. It wasn't a lot. But... The thing is, if we draw into something good, at least he's got zero cards in hand. So there's really not much he can do to us now, other than just two damage a turn. Unfortunately, we're drawing nothing but lands. So that sucks. But hey, the good news is, at least he doesn't have a Creator of Behemoth, right? <laughs> At least, he doesn't have a Crater Hoof Behemoth, so that's fine. I have a feeling if we can stabilize, if we can draw something, if we can get back our Hero of Eroas, it would be nice. Okay, that's, that's not good, but it's something. We'll play our land, we'll pass the turn. Now we just need a creature to attach that to, and we'll be, uh, we'll be golden. So, since there's not, not a lot of stuff going on here, I'm just going to talk a little bit about something else. I noticed that you guys have been uh, giving me a lot of suggestions about what to put on the channel. Uh, specifically, I think Rift has seen some success on the channel because there's not a lot of Let's Plays uh, on YouTube about Rift. And it's a game that I really enjoyed uh, back in the day. I used to play it quite a bit. Let's pass the turn. So, considering that you guys have really enjoyed the content on Rift, I decided to re-download the game. The problem is, I was having some issues. And, uh, oh god, Young Pyromancer, here we go. I was having some issues with accessing my account. It was a bit of an older account, so unfortunately I couldn't access my account. My authenticator was uh, inactive. Uh, the code was wrong. I had to contact their support and all that kind of stuff. The good news is that most of the stuff has been resolved right now. The only thing is I'm going through my account just to get reacquainted with the game so I can make a, a reasonably entertaining video for you guys. Oh, these cards are absolutely useless. They're just completely useless. I mean, we're at a 13 life, which is not bad. But, I mean, if we draw a creature, that's going to be awesome. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I want to overcommit with uh, with everything, but at the same time, it'll give us some stability. But if we can't draw a creature, guys, we're going to lose this game to Young Pyro in two one ones. And, I mean, it looks like he's just got one card in hand. I don't know what it could be. It could be a land for all I know. No, it's going to be another... Another beetle. And just the battlefield trigger, which gets minus one, minus one. Yeah, I guess you had to do that. Hmm. Wow, still not drawing into any creatures. This is pretty bad. This is pretty bad, guys. We might lose this game. So, uh, while we were on the topic of Rift, I wanted to let you guys know there are some more videos coming. Hopefully next week. If not, it'll be the week after. But I'm doing my best to get these videos out. It's just I'm getting reacquainted with the game because it's been about a year, as you guys know, since I've played the game. So I want to get reacquainted with it so at least I know what I'm talking about again. At least uh, I can show you a game that I'm comfortable playing around with and, and giving you guys a good idea of, yeah, I think we're I think it's over. I think, uh, here, let's just play land. And we're just going to do that. And we're just going to do that. And then we're going to quit, <laughs> because we lost this game. Alright, let's check out the uh, the deck build, and that'll be it for this video. So uh, stay tuned for the deck build. 
All right, so let's have a look at the build for this particular deck. As I said, we're using red and white. Uh, so our land base is uh, 12 plains, 8 mountains, and 4 guild gates, Boros guild gates. Pretty simple. And then we're going to start it off with our trained Caracal here. It's a 1-1 lifelink. So the lifelink means it deals, uh, you gain life equal to the amount of damage it deals. So it's not too bad, especially with some of the creature pump up that we have in here. So two of those in the deck. Four gods willing at instant speed, you can give a target creature protection from the color of your choice. You get a scry one. So scry means that you get to take a look at the top card and it's determined by the number here. So in this case, it's scry one. So you're just looking at the top card. If it's scry three, for example, it'd be the top three cards. So you look at the top X cards of your library, whatever the scry number is, and you get to choose whether you want to keep them on top or bottom. Uh, you can put any number of them on the top or the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Uh, in, in any order that you want, as long as it's right on the top or right on the bottom of your deck. So this helps to give protection from different kinds of threats, but also helps to thin out your deck uh, and let you know what you're going to be drawing, which is always nice. A uh, hero of Eroas is pretty sweet. You guys saw him in action. He's a 2-2 for 2, which is already really good. Aura spells that you cast cost one colorless less to cast, which is also really good because we've got some pump up in this deck. And his heroic ability, whenever he gets targeted by a spell or ability that you control, uh, you, get, uh, you get to put a 1-1. One, one on Hero of Eros. So we have two of him. And then we, of course we've got our Sigil Paladin, First Strike and Exalted. 2-2. Uh, two, two. You guys already know what Exalted means. First Strike just means that he deals damage before the actual combat damage is assigned uh, in real time at the same time during the combat step. So that's pretty sweet. We've got three of him. And we've got a few uh, Ordeal of Heliods. So it's an uh, enchanted creature and it gets plus one plus one each time it attacks. If it has three more counters on it, it falls off. You gain ten life. So pretty sweet. We have uh, three of those. Four Nimbus Wings, Enchanted Creature gets plus one plus two and has flying, always good to give your creatures uh, flying, just some nice evasion to have, get some damage through, especially on uh, Brimaz here, King of Oreskos, he's a three drop for a three four, Vigilance, which means he doesn't tap when he attacks, and whenever he attacks or blocks, he puts a one one cat into play, which is pretty sweet. Uh, we didn't see a lot of action with the Mentor of the Meek these games uh, in this video here, but he's a three drop for a two two. And whenever a creature that comes into play under your control has two or less power, for each of those creatures that comes into play, you can pay one. If you do, you get to draw a card. So nice, not too bad to have a nice draw engine there. Three Banisher Priests, pretty uh, pretty simple. Three drop for a 2-2. Two, two. When it comes in, you get to exile a creature on your opponent's side of the board, and it stays exiled until Banisher Priest leaves play. Uh, just a single Armored Ascension here. I didn't feel it was uh, too pertinent to put any more of these in because it's a pretty expensive spell, and that also only... Um, it only works with planes, so depending on how many planes you have, it gets uh, the creature gets plus one, plus one for the number of planes you control, as well as it has flying. Uh, just a single Baneslayer Angel, pretty good against uh, any black decks, uh, but also really good to gain you a little bit of life, and of course you can pump it up a little bit more. Uh, it's a 5 drop for a 5-5, five five, which is pretty good, but it also has flying, first strike, lifelink, and protection from demons and dragons, which means that demons and dragons can't deal damage to it, and then it can't, uh, can't block it as well, which is really, really good. Moving on to our red spells, we have two Goblin Rabble Masters. He's a 2-2 two, two for 3. Whenever he uh, whenever he attacks, he gets uh, pumped up plus 1 plus 0 oh for each Goblin that attacks with him. Uh, and uh, whenever you go into combat step, you make a 1-1 one, one Goblin with haste and uh, tapped and attacking, which is pretty sweet. Uh, we didn't get this uh, in, in many of our games here as well, or in any of our games, I think, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Anger of the Gods. Uh, it is a, it's a 3-3 sorcery speed, so you can't do it any time. You have to do it on your main or second main phase. Uh, but it deals 3 damage to everything. Uh, each each creature. Uh, and uh, doesn't deal damage to players, of course. But uh, all creatures uh, get 3 damage. So it's, that's pretty good. We have 2 of those. Nice little board clear if you need it. Uh, we've got 1 uh, Storm Breath Dragon, which is pretty sweet. 4-4. Four, four. Uh, for 5, of course, you can Monstrous him. And uh, Flying Haste and Protection from White. So he can't be damaged or affected by White spells at all. The monstrosity is uh, 7, and it's a monstrosity 3. So what happens is you pay the monstrosity cost, and it gets pumped up 3 one, one counters, pretty much, for whatever the monstrosity is. So in this case, it's going to be pumped up to a 7-7. Seven, seven. And then sometimes, on certain creatures, there's a monstrosity effect that when you monstrous him, something happens. And with Stormbreath Dragon, it's that when he becomes monstrous, it deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of cards in their hand. So if you're playing against a control player with lots of cards in their hand, uh, this is a nice card to monstrous. And uh, the last two guys here, we have Wrecking Ogre, which hardly ever gets played for his 5 mana cost. Uh, usually we use the 5 mana as a Blood Rush, just to get some uh, some damage through. Blood Rush was uh, a mechanic, I believe, back in uh, Return to Ravnica. Uh, I'm not sure if it was uh, any time before that, but in Return to Ravnica there was a bunch of cards, like one of my favorites, uh, uh, what was it, it was a 4-4. 
I can't think of it now. Maybe you guys could help me out with this. What was it? It was a, it was a red green four four blood rush for two, and it's a plus four plus four trample for the for the creature that you're being. Uh, my goodness, and I played this deck too, I can't even remember. But anyway, the way Blood Rush works is you use it as an instant. So when you're attacking, uh, you can Blood Rush it. So you pay the Blood Rush cost, you discard the card, and the target creature usually gets the benefits of the actual card. So this card has Double Strike and 3-3. Three, three. Uh, and if you Blood Rush it instead, you discard the card and the target creature until end of turn gets plus 3, plus 3, and Double Strike, which is really nice. Uh, so just two of those. Gore Clan Rampager! That's what it was. That was a really good card. If you guys ever watched the Magic 2013 Worlds with uh, Brian Kibler, he used to play that uh, Kibler Beat Stack, as I like to call it, with a bunch of Gore Clan Rampagers, and he just demolished people. Uh, and uh, lastly, we have True Fire Paladin. So for two mana, we have one red and one white. It's a 2-2 two -two with Vigilance. And uh, the nice thing about these abilities here is they don't have a tap symbol after them, which means you can pay as many times as you like. Obviously, you wouldn't be paying any more than once for the uh, first strike, because you can only give them first strike once. Uh, but you can definitely pump them up. Uh, and it's really, really nice. So it just costs one white and one red to do either of those. Very versatile creature, especially in the early game, uh, to get rid of some attacking creatures or to push through some damage. So that's going to do it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for future videos, make sure to leave them in the comments section below. Please uh, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. It definitely helps me a lot. You guys have been doing a great job of keeping me motivated to make uh, great great content for you. I uh, hope you've been enjoying Heroes of the Storm as well. There's a lot of other good stuff. Uh, there's a weekly article now on the blog, so check that out, sspgaming.blogspot.com. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate it, and we will see you in the next video.